Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. It's me, Henry. Today, we're going to continue to learn the fifth chapter of the book, The Weight of Life by Kazuo Inamuni, Harmony with the Universe, section 7 until section 12. Let's get started. Section 7. No need to be perfect, but perseverance. The ordination and subsequent practice is a fresh life experience for me. Through the act of almsgiving, I deeply felt the great compassion of the Buddha. After becoming a monk, if there is a new understanding, it is that the practice needs to be as always as persevering. There is a Zen saying, before enlightenment, cut wood and transport water. After enlightenment, cut wood and transport water. After entering Buddhism, I still focus on the Buddha while being exposed to the real world. But I know myself that my heart has actually changed. For example, through practice, I once again felt my immaturity. As the leader of the company, I had been guiding my subordinates and cadres, pretending to be instructed, and writing the originally clear facts in books or speech drafts. I felt that the overwhelming and disgusting things lurking in my heart and need to be self-reflected deeply. I realized once again that in fact, Truly amazing people are in the nameless field. I think the truly outstanding people are those with good hearts. They are kind-hearted old ladies who live in the streets and alleys. And they are young people working towards their goals in the corner of the city. Compared with those who have achieved both fame and fortune, these nameless people are more superior. They are more compassionate and kind and beautiful hearts. On the other hand, no matter how hard we practice, we ordinary people cannot reach the state of enlightenment. I am deeply saddened by this. During the ordination ceremony, the instructor asked me if I could abide by the ten precepts, and my answer was, I can guarantee. Only then can I be recognized as a monk, and I will join the ranks of monks after solemnly swearing to obey the precepts. In spite of this, I still think it is impossible for me to fully obey the precepts. No matter how hard I try to keep the precepts, keep working hard, and sit in meditation for hundreds of hours, I can't finally reach the state of enlightenment. For the person like me who is weak will and cannot completely escape from troubles, in order to sharpen the mind, no matter how good deeds I accumulate, I am afraid I cannot completely eliminate selfish desires and always maintain altruism. No matter how hard you try to keep the precepts, you cannot avoid breaking the precepts. What is to it an imperfect existence of human beings, including me? But I think this is enough. Although it would not reach a state of perfection in the end, it is worthy of respect for this province to work hard for this. It is very important to have the desire to adhere the precepts and the will to abide by it or to have a sincere reflection and self-discipline. To spend every day in this mood can sharpen the mind and save the soul enough even if it can't fully enlighten. Through monkhood and spiritual practice, I believe in this even more. Gods, Buddhas, or the cosmic will are not people who love what they have done, but people who love what they have done hard. Only those who want to do something but fail to achieve it have self-reflection on their own abilities and continue to work tirelessly from the next day. Those kind of people can be safe. Can you sharpen your mind as long as you work hard to comply and do it? The answer is yes. The desire and behavior of raising the mind is worthy of respect because this is a behavior that conforms to the Buddha's compassionate mind and conforms to the will of the universe. Section 8. The Beautiful Psychological Core of Heart I think that the human heart has multiple structures, which are composed of multiple concentric cycles. Speaking from the outer layer, first, intellectuality, acquire knowledge and ethics, Second, sensibility, in charge of the mental functions of the five senses or emotions. Third, instinct, in order to maintain the desire of the flesh. Number four, soul, is experience and seeing of the world surrounding the true self. Number five, the true self, deep down, is a core part 
full of truth, goodness, and beauty. Deep in our hearts, there is a true self surrounded by the soul. An instinct covers the outside of the soul. This is how we came to this world. For example, a newborn baby wants to eat mother's milk when he is hungry. This is the instinct at the outermost part of the heart at work. As it continues to grow, it forms sensibility outside of instinct and gradually becomes intellectual. That is to say, in the process of human birth and growth, the heart gradually becomes multi-layered from the inside to the outside. On the other hand, as we age, we gradually strip away from the outside. For example, in the process of dementia, the intellectual road of knowledge, theory, and other interference is weakened, and childlike feelings are produced. After a while, feelings or sensibility are dull. Instincts begin to be exposed, and eventually the instincts are weakened and slowly approaching death. What is important here is the true self and the soul that constitute the core of the heart. What is the difference between the two? The true self is also said in yoga, as in the meaning of the words, it refers to the core that constitutes the core part, the true consciousness. Wisdom in Buddhism means that once you have a great enlightenment, you will be able to understand the truth throughout the universe. It can also be said to be the projection of the thoughts of Buddha and God, and the expression of the will of the universe. In Buddhism, it is said that everything in the world can become Buddha, which means that everything in the world has Buddha nature. The so-called true self is the Buddha nature itself the wisdom itself that exists in a universe, and it also means the essence of the things and the truth of all things. These are in our heart. The true self is Buddha nature, so it is also extremely beautiful. It is full of love, honesty, truth, goodness, and beauty. Human beings admire truth, goodness, and beauty extremely. That's because there is an excellent true self with truth goodness and beauty in humans' hearts. It is precisely because it is something that we have in our heart that we keep pursuing it. Section 9. Disaster is the cleansing agent to wash away sins. It is the soul that wraps the true self. If the true self is naked, then the soul is equivalent to the clothes covering the body. Inside the cloth are all thoughts, actions, consciousness, or experiences by soul, and all the thoughts and behavior in this world are also attached. The so-called soul refers to the things that have been accumulated in many reincarnations, whether it is good intentions or evil thoughts, good deeds or evil deeds. As souls, they wrap the inner core of the true self. Therefore, the true self is common to all people while the soul differs from person to person. I remember that when I was a child, my mother used to say that your soul is ugly. In Kagoshima, this refers to the bad personality. My young soul contains some kind of bad scene which has distorted and defiled part of my soul. Maybe my mother saw this at that time. So what is the evil attached to the soul like dirt? In this regard, the one who taught me deeply was the teacher, Master Nishikata, who took care of me when I was a monk, now the president of Miyoshinji Temple. Nearly 20 years ago, Kyocera Corporation manufactured and sold artificial knee joints made of precision ceramics without obtaining a business license, which was criticized by the public. In fact, under the strong request of doctors and patients, we apply the artificial hip joint that has obtained the production license to the knee joint. This was not my intention, but I did not make any excuses and was willing to take the criticize. When I visited Master Nishikata, I say, because of some of these problems, I'm exhausted physically and mentally. The teacher, he knew this after reading the newspaper. I thought he would comfort me, but he say, there's nothing you can do with this challenging matter. As long as you are alive, hard work is inevitable. Then he said, when a disaster strikes, 
Don't be depressed, but happy, because disasters can eliminate the sins that were attached to the soul before. This is the point. The disaster eliminated your forgotten sins. So, in the morning, I should congratulate you. I felt saved when I heard this. I accepted the criticism of society and the test of providence. Frankly, the teacher's words are more valuable than any comfort, and I have realized the great significance of human existence. Section 10: Forging the reason and conscience first, pursuing a thorough understanding after that. Speaking of the soul, there may be some people expressing resistance, but some things we have heard or experienced should show its existence. Death experience is one of them. People who were once dead due to diseases, accidents, and etc., look at themselves who have been bedridden and treated for a long time, as if seeing another incredible world, and then regain their breathing. A friend of mine has such a dying experience. This friend had a heart attack late at night and was taken to the hospital. The heart showed that he stopped beating, and he woke up under the efforts of the doctors. I heard that he felt like he was walking on the flower-blooming grassland during this period of time. I don't know why. I walk up to him and ask, "Why are you doing here?" At this moment, he suddenly regained consciousness and woke up on the hospital bed. After hearing people around me talk about this experience, I once again believe that the body and soul can be separated from existence, because he said that the scenery he saw on the edge of death is actually the real world. Although the body is dead, the soul seems to be in another world, feeling the real existence of the landscape. In addition to the flesh at will, there must be a soul in another place. According to the Buddhist thought of self reincarnation, we are born with sins. That means many dirty souls in the previous life, and then die after adding some sins in this life. And hidden in it is the pure, beautiful, and eternal heart with Buddha nature called the true self. If the true self is directly revealed, then humans can be like Buddhas, with beautiful hearts. Good thoughts and good deeds, but this is not the case, because the true self is surrounded by sinful souls, even wrapped in desire, feel, instinct. Like this, layers of barriers prevent the true self from appearing. Practices such as meditation or yoga are also for the purpose of sharpening the mind. They are like polishing the lens. Constantly trying to peel off the outer barriers from the outer layer to the inner layer of the heart. First, peel off of outermost layer of intellectual to reach sensibility. Continue to temper the sensibility to reach instinct, and then temper the instinct until the true self is revealed. The thorough tempering of mind from the outside to the inside is practice. The so-called awakening refers to the thorough tempering of the mind until the true self. If this leads to the true self, then we can understand all the truth and obtain the wisdom of the Buddha. Moreover, those who have reached their true self will not be confused by their instinct and sensibility. And can do the best to pursue the life attitude of dedicated to society and dedicated to mankind. But as mentioned earlier, ordinary people cannot reach the realm of awakening. It is almost impossible for ordinary people to realize their true self by tempering their mind. So what should we do? I think the important thing is to restrain and control sensibility and instinct through the use of reasons and conscience. Obey the reason and conscience from the true self and soul, and instill a firm ethic and morality into the heart. That is to say, adhere to the thinking mode of dedicating to society and dedicating to others, and do not pursue or cover a contentedness attitude in life that exceeds the need. With this kind of reason and conscience, restraining sensibility and instinct, and accumulating good deeds, you can temper your mind and reach the highest state of awakening. The normal soul cultivator will never die with the death of the body.
Section 11. Every small thing has its existence value. What is the nature of man? Why did we come to this world? Toshihiko Izutsu, a great master of Islamology and Oriental philosophy, elaborated on the nature of human beings as follows. If we contemplate hard to understand the nature of human beings, we will be close to a delicate, pure, and infinitely transparent consciousness. You will feel the existence of yourself very clearly. All the other five senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, disappear, and finally, there is only the state of consciousness of existence. At the same time, you will also realize that all things in the world are like this. This kind of existence constitutes. This state of consciousness itself reveals the essence of human beings. After hearing Izutsu say this, Mr. Kawajuno, the head of the Agency for Cultural Affairs and Psychologists, responded humorously, Does your existence play the role of flower? My existence is acting my kawaii myself. I still want to whisper with the flower. Usually, when people see the flower, they will say, the flower is here. Can it also be said that there is a blooming? In short, living beings have biological attributes, body or spirit, consciousness or perceptions, etc. After these are removed, existence appears. Taking it as a core produces life represented by human beings, and the core of existence is common to all life. Sometimes it is in the shape of a flower, and sometimes it plays the role of a human being. From this perspective, it is the same for me. The person named Kazuo Inamori did not exist in the first place, but just a certain existence occasionally became me. The person who founded Kyocera Corporation and DDI Corporation did not have the inevitability that I had to do. They were just given by God by chance and I played a role. All people are given a role from God, and each plays its own role. In this sense, it can be said that everyone has the same weight of existence. As explained in the second chapter of this book, all human beings, even the tree or grass in the biological world, and even the stones on the roadside are all given functions by the Creator. That means they exist according to the will of the universe. In fact, there is a lot of conservation of energy in the universe. The total amount of energy that forms the universe will not change its fixed amount even if it changes shape. For example, compare with the fire produced by cutting down trees and turning them into firewoods. The energy that originally existed as trees is only converted into heat energy and gas energy, and the sum of its energy remains unchanged. For another example, even a small stone is a necessary and indispensable existence to form the universe. No matter how small, if it is missing, the universe itself will cease to exist. Section 12. A bright future is conceived in the correct living way. All the all-encompassing things in existence and the universe are part of the light body of the universe, and they are by no means accidental. Everything is necessary for the universe and exists because of it. I believe that among all these existences, human beings have come to the universe with the greatest mission. Being the spirit of all things has been given a very important role. Therefore, we have an obligation to recognize our own responsibilities and work hard to temple our souls throughout our life. From the time of birth, in order to make the soul nobler, I have been working hard bit by bit. I think this is also the ultimate answer to why human beings live in the world. Work hard, be grateful, reflect, and be kind. Sincerely reflect and restrain yourself. Continue to temper your mind and improve your personality in daily life. It is the meaning of life to work hard to do these things that seem to be taken for granted. Apart from that, I thought there was no other way to live. In an increasingly troubled society, people seem to be exploring in the dark. Despite this, I still can't help but paint a bright future full of dreams and hopes. 
everyone is living in a fulfilling, fruitful, and happy life. I sincerely wish and firmly believe that such a beautiful society will come. If readers can follow the way of life described in this book, whether it is an individual's life, or a family, or a business, or even a country, they will definitely be able to move in a good direction and eventually reap many fruits. Each of us understands our noble mission and implements the correct principles of life. I believe that with this weight of life, we'll be able to urge you in a glorious tomorrow. That's all for the sharing today. If you find value and like this video, please consider to hit the subscribe button and share. Most importantly, leave a message here and let me know what you think. I would love to read your comment and reply to your comment. I hope to see you in the next video.